In this how-to video, we will guide you through the process of integrating an elevator into your pedestrian simulation model. Specifically, we'll be focusing on adding the elevator into a model simulating pedestrian movement up the stairs. Let's open the stairs example model, which you can find in the pedestrian library category of the how-to models. Expand the levels widget at the bottom of the graphical editor. The main diagram contains three levels, level, lower ground, and upper ground. Our primary focus lies on integrating the elevator that connects the lower ground and upper ground levels, representing the first and the second floors of the model, respectively. Choose the lower ground level. This is where you'll find the space markup elements defining this area. Switch to the palette view and open the pedestrian library palette there. Now drag the elevator from the space markup section to the graphical editor and position it near the area defining the upper ground. With the Alt key pressed, move it so that the border of the elevator shape touches the border of the upper floor area. Rotate the elevator shape so that the door is located on the shape's right edge and faces the upper floor area. Now we can tune the elevator's properties. First, expand the position and size section of the elevator properties and check that it belongs to the lower ground. Then, you can set the capacity property to 8 people and the minimum stay time property to the more reasonable 3 seconds. By default, the elevator is set to serve all levels that exist in your model. Since we also have one service level containing labels and decoration shapes, we should exclude it from the list of service levels, otherwise the runtime error will occur. So, set the elevator to stop exclusively at the upper ground and lower ground levels by setting the elevator to stop at selected levels and then selecting these two levels in the levels property. Then, navigate to the flowchart defining the process. The easiest way to find flowchart blocks is to navigate to the projects view, expand the agents branch of the main agent types tree, and double-click a flowchart block there. The current flowchart is very simple. It defines how people appear in the system, use the stairs, and move to the target line on the upper floor where they exit the modeled environment. We want a part of our pedestrians to take the elevator. So, we need to redirect the pedestrian flow to two alternative routes. For this purpose, we will add the ped select output block. Switch back to the palette, then drag the ped select output block to the canvas and insert it before the ped change ground block. In the block's properties, define that 75% of pedestrians use the staircase while the others use the elevator by setting probability 1 to 0.75 and probability 2 to 0.25. The remaining probabilities should be set to zero. Now you can add the PED elevator block to the flowchart. Connect it to the second output port of the PED select output block and to the PED go to block. Choose the elevator's name to associate our elevator space markup shape with this PED elevator flowchart block. Then set the target level for pedestrians who use this block to upper ground. Let's run the model. We see that pedestrians successfully take the elevator, and we have done the basic setup rather quickly. Now just a few optional steps are left to make things perfect. As you can see, some pedestrians who plan to take the elevator climb the stairs on their way to it. We need to differentiate paths between the staircase and the elevator by adding a wall between them. Right drag the canvas to pan the graphical diagram until you see our layout. Double-click the wall element in the space markup section of the pedestrian library palette. Then click in the graphical editor to start drawing the wall near the staircase. Click to add a corner point and double-click near the elevator to finish drawing. To save time on tuning the wall appearance, let's just make it invisible. It will act as the line that pedestrians cannot cross. We also want to facilitate pedestrian access to and from the elevator on both levels by simulating a cabin with two doors so that pedestrians could enter and exit the elevator using the convenient side. Change the elevator's doors configuration property to the front rear configuration. If we run the model now, pedestrians will use both doors on each level. However, we want to restrict the usage by one door per level. We cannot do this using the shape properties so we will do it by writing some Java code. We will use the on startup code placeholder in the main properties to modify the elevator configuration right before the model starts running. To address the element, type its name, elevator. Put dot, 
and then invoke Code Completion Assistant by pressing Control and Space. We need to change the door configuration, so start typing door. The list now shows the function we need, disable door. Insert its call and set its arguments. We want to disable the front door at the lower ground. To do this, we will set lower ground and elevator door front as the arguments. To disable rear door on the upper ground, add a similar line of code and modify it to elevator, disable door, upper ground, elevator door rear. When done, run the model again. Now you can see that pedestrians use the elevator and the doors are used on the corresponding floors only. Thanks for watching. We hope this video helps you level up your models. Put your thumbs up and we will get back with more AnyLogic How to videos.